I called you because I wanted to see what you've been up to, you know? Like talking. Can you take this phone away from me? I would like to pay for my coffee with this poem I wrote. Really now? Who's that? That's Tom Odell. Do you know where's the guy who, he forgot this? I think he just left. Hey. The actors are going into the sunset. The red skies are washed in a melancholic soundtrack. Bliss is dripping in the shape of a kiss and a happy ending. Heart is beating faster, sending you a message. Something beautiful is about to happen in this perfect instant. So, taking part in a poetry slam in front of a crowd of complete strangers? That's something I've never thought I'd do. But let's backtrack a little to where I left off. That brief meeting with the mysterious guy from the coffee house. Hey, looking for something? Your phone. Thank you. My pleasure. You guessed right, he was long gone. So I started nosing through the notebook he left behind. Not because I was curious about the owner or totally wanted to meet him again or something. I was just looking for contact details so I can return it. Duh. Just trying to be an upstanding member of society, you know. <laughs> Turns out the notebook was actually his poetry manuscript. I read every word of it and still found no address or phone number. What I did found was that all of his poems were about the things and places he loved. And yet, none of them seemed to have an ending, a closure of some sort. Weird. Anyway, I had to step up my game. You know how bad it is to lose something, right? So here I am at the cafe that seems to be the inspiration for the poem Power of Music. Head inside. Ticket, please. Ticket? Are you going to find me for going in? <laughs> we're hosting a poetry night, and apparently we're sold out. Then I guess I have no other option but to climb through a back window. Can you give me a lift? There's a fat bill in for you, if you help me. I promise I won't tell the manager. That's nice. Except that I am the manager. Don't tell anyone. This is good poetry here. Hmm. I think we can work something out. One of our competitors dropped out at the last moment. Something silly about waiting for a package or something. Between us, I think he chickened out. Anyway, I need someone to take his place. You seem sassy enough for the job. How's your public speaking? I was scared stiff, of course. Public speaking is among the top fears for my generation, right there with the dread of lifelong mortgage. I'll do it. Maybe he's in there. Who's in there? Did I say that out loud? 
Come on in. Beltry's not dead. Rhythm and sound. Please go along, go along. Nothing less but freedom in disguise. Great performance, Amelia. Thank you. Well done. Congrats on winning your first slam poetry contest. Please tell us how you feel. Would you like to say something to the fans? <laughs> um, it was so damn awesome. Literally, the last time I did something remotely close to a public performance was when I was born to an audience of mom, dad, the doc, and the nurse. <laughs> Oh, I was so nervous before I got on stage. But once I got there, I got this really cool vibe from everyone, from the audience. I'm so doing this again. <laughs> and you should do it again. Be oh, quit, you. Yeah. <laughs> the season, now get that. The season just opened. And I can see you becoming a household name here. Amelia does poetry. <laughs> um. Thank you, but um, I have to finish something mm. at the moment, so we'll keep in touch and repeat the next time round. <laughs> That's a deal. <laughs> Maybe I didn't find my poet that night, but what I found was a new side of me that I totally loved, so I kept going where his poetry would take me. Breathe in, clouds. Breathe out hopes. Breathe in, doves. Breathe out, words. Breathe in, love. Breathe out, pain. Breathe in, whispers. Breathe out, rain. I heard people say that dancing is visual poetry. They've seen the way you move, apparently. Your wild stride redefines geometry. And I swear, atoms follow your choreography. So when people ask me what dancing is, I tell them, it's how the soul speaks. I turned my phone off and with a coffee cup in hand, I sat on the bench in the park with no purpose at hand. I looked at the clouds and their ever-changing shapes. I admired a tree and the carved in names. I studied some birds and their ridiculous chase. I talked with a stranger, face to face. I realized in those moments how much I miss the murmur of the wind. With every new poem, I discovered something new and exciting about me. Until one day, Lovely piece, isn't it? I don't know. I don't see it as living room material. I could clear some framed life-changing quotes from my kitchen for it, but that's as far as I'd go. I know you from the coffee house. I didn't know you were an art aficionado. Oh, wait. Did I forget my phone again? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's more to coffee than meets the eye. Let's just say um, I have a soft spot for beautiful stories in all their forms of expression. Also, I'm redecorating. Oh, well, if you ever need framed inspirational messages, I think I have a few too many. <laughs> and you? You seem to be looking for something, but that something doesn't seem to be odd. Speaking of it, I think I found what I was looking for. I'm sorry, I have to go. It was time for plan B. You're out of your damn mind, Amelia. Hi there. What can I do for you? I would like to make a unique proposition for you. There is an inspiring story in every cup of Julius Meinl. Visit your favorite coffee house and discover yours. 